Hi everyone, in this demo we're going to be doing just a basic watercolor of conch shells. Now this photograph I took down along North Carolina on the Outer Banks. It was just from a gift shop that had tons of shells for sale and all I did was just take various photographs of the pile of shells. Now on a bright sunny day like this this is what I resort to because it's not a good day to photograph for photography's sake, but for watercolor reference, it's ideal. You have real strong shadows, uh, you have uh, bright vivid shapes that are well defined because of the direct sun. Now with that in mind, what I would strongly suggest is if you're just starting out, we're going to trace this one before we start painting it. But remember, I always emphasize that when you're painting, you're actually drawing with color. So once you start drawing out your own outlines, that's better because then you could manipulate and change things and even add other elements from other photographs as you draw something out. But until then, if you take your own photographs, you could set up the painting how you want to paint it uh, and just have it ready to go so you could just trace it as is with very little or no changes whatsoever. This way it'll give you the opportunity to set things up and it'll give you a chance to think of how can I paint this, what will I paint it, what will I do to get it done? Because you have to have some kind of a plan of attack just to know how you're going to do something before you start. Now, with that said, we're going to use the layer system and we're going to stay with it that we could build up colors for our deepest, darkest areas. Then that way we'll have texture and we'll have various colors showing through our layers. Otherwise, if you keep mixing wet colors into a wet layer, they're just going to keep adding up and you're going to get probably a variation of a brown or a gray by the time all these colors add up. So now if you leave your layers of paint on the same layer dry then re repaint over it that's okay but it's also just as easy to just make multiple layers and then you could uh, separate them out later and if you don't want something you do want something then you'll have those choices with multiple layers versus painting dry layers over top of each other on a single layer now, with all that said, uh, let's dive into our photograph and see what we got and just see what kind of a game plan we could come up with for this watercolor. Okay, let's take a look and see what we're going to be doing. Now, first, uh, just reference images again, just a quick review, hit window, and then just go down here to reference image. When you click on that, this panel will come up, and then if I open it up, here's where my reference images will be. Uh, just click on this arrow right here to add one. It'll take it. Uh, to wherever you have them set inside your system just click on the one you want and then open it and it will be right here and then if you click on it it will be right here and here is the image we're going to paint from and it has a ton of color and a ton of shapes uh, right now what I want to show you is uh, this is why I work from given colors now I actually have cobalt violet selected if I pick cobalt violet it is B96EAD. <laughs> now, that would be a little bit uh, of a more challenge to remember than just saying cobalt violet. Since I have been using all these colors so long, I could immediately associate to what a cobalt violet looks like to me. So for that reason, I could go in and figure out what colors I'm going to use to render any part of this. Up in here, the cooler areas is what I want to block in, and then the warmer areas I'll block in. These, I'll be using cobalt violet, cobalt blue, uh, maybe even a little bit of uh, oranges just here in the reflected areas, and then this will obviously be quinacridone gold and cadmium orange, which are these two colors right here. And then down in here could even be a pinkish, which could be a cadmium red washed out. And that would be this color right in here. And then also even a little bit of permanent rose or even the uh, deeper areas could be actually the potter's pink. And then uh, also uh, the cobalt violet down in here. And that would be a, a darker version of the actual uh, reds. Uh, that I will use for the brighter areas. In here will be raw umbers, uh, down in here will be oranges and raw umbers going all the way to a sepia, which is right here. And then I may put in a little bit of blue just to cool it down since it's a shadowed area. But now, as far as this photograph goes, I'm not gonna put this white spot in here. 
I'm not going to put this piece in right here, and I have this drawn out right now, but as I paint, I may take it out later because I have plenty of information that I could finish these shells uh, without having those pieces there. And being that it's a real bright white spot, I don't know if I'd, I'd rather like it there or just leave some of these areas go dark so other areas would be more pronounced if they are light. Now, with these edges and everything else, uh, what I did was went ahead and uh, I want to show you though, I actually brought it up as a reference in here just so I could show you the gray version and the gray version again, uh, when we bring this up, uh, this will help me with my lights and darks. You can see how dark the shadows are compared to everything else and then the bright white that's in the direct sun, it will obviously be the lightest areas. And then now you can see where your light and dark areas are when you take away all the colors. Now I'm going to close this out and then just keep in mind uh, I am actually going to work from the same reference image but it will be on another monitor because I want to paint it in as I go. Now if you want to leave your photograph on your image again then you just go to file hit import image and then go to wherever it is on your system and then you could bring it up and, and import it into your canvas. Now with that said uh, what I will do then is you could then cut it back to about, uh, it, depending on the picture, uh, anywhere from 30 to 50%, just dark enough so you could see it, and then you could outline it from there. And I already went ahead and did that. And again, when I make my drawings, they're very loose. They're just actually just outlined in this part. But even when I freehand, I'm only going to freehand my shapes and that's it. Everything else I will do as I paint. Because if I do an elaborate drawing, it's still not going to tell me what colors I should be using and how much of each. That comes with the painting. A pencil drawing for me is just to keep my shapes and proportions as accurate as I could get them so I don't have to change anything or, or completely rearrange something later. Now with all that said, uh, let's get started. I went ahead and lightly drew this out and uh, we're ready to start painting. Uh, let's go in and, and we'll just uh, give a quick rundown of how we're gonna paint some of these areas in. And I'll show you uh, just a preliminary type painting and then we'll go ahead and start in with the speed painting. And of course, we'll stop every now and then to talk about what we're about to do or what we already have done. Let's get started. Okay, I already have everything set up. We're ready to go. And what I'm going to do is actually just and just a just a uh, uh, sketch layer there, and we'll just use this just as our as our uh, uh, demo type uh, paintbrush strokes. And what I want to do is I will wet that layer. So I'll go up here and hit just wet the layer. And now just keep in mind, all we're going to be doing is just I'm only going to be using a couple different brushes, and that's it. I'll be using the Bloom Wet, and then uh, also uh, the uh, mop wet and that will depend on whether I want texture or if I want very smooth transitions from one color to another almost like an airbrush effect and then also uh, we may use uh, some of the the spray or the coarse heavier uh, wet uh, later and that will help us give us the texture that we want but that won't be till the very end now say for example if we just start with our very lightest colors first we could kind of put them down anywhere they are because colors will be going over top of them to make them darker anyway. So in other words, as long as you start with your very lightest colors, uh, you really can't go wrong. Now right in here, all of this is all pinkish red and then it goes up into like just the, the raw umbers, potter pinks, which is this color right here. And then uh, up into the quinacridone gold and cadmium uh, orange. So what I would do is I would probably take this brush first and then I will actually go to my red and I am going to leave the water up as high as I can. But now keep in mind when you start re-wetting it, then it'll depend on how you have your visual settings. Now here is how I have mine right now. I don't have any edge darkening at all. And I usually set it that way only because if I want transitions, then I can uh, have a nicer transition from one color to another. Or if I put colors down on top of pre-existing colors then they'll blend nicer without picking up the pigment or the color and carrying it off and creating an edge I don't want this way I will make the edges if I want them and that just helps a little bit more with the control of watercolors 
So now if I use this mop here, I'm going to cut the color, the opacity way down. I'll leave the water all the way up and then uh, we'll make it about this size right there. And then if I just go to my red, I can then just start pushing it in right, right in here. And then I can even take it down in here and I'm just roughly painting because this is where it's going to actually be uh, blending into the shadowed area. So it's okay to put it there too. And then uh, just as how I'm starting here and then right across here is where it's going to be real shiny. And then it'll go into quinacridone gold right up in here. And then I'm going to paint that in. And just to help it, I am going to blend those colors together. Just so they blend the way I want. Nice soft airbrush effects. Because I don't want no edges yet. I just this is just this would be like the base color. And I'll have several of them as I go. And then keep in mind if I start mixing colors or start blending colors, just even as I'm starting off, I'll have my finger on the quick dry pretty quick. Now the way I have my key set up, I'll put the uh uh, actual uh, uh, tutorial up about that. That is the one of the first ones of the getting started. I'll put that up uh, just to show you uh, where the uh, keypads are for me. And that is on the uh, Wacom. But now what I'll do is I'll, I'll stay with the quinacridone gold and I'll go up in here and then I'll just blend that in. And then like I said, I'll get rid of that edge because this is a very, uh, very soft, almost like an airbrush effect so it depends on whether you want texture or you don't and that's that's the only thing you'll worry about uh right now and then i'll get the raw umber and we'll put a little bit right in there and it's going to be darker this right in here is what i'm doing and again i'm drawing as i'm painting because i still have to put these things in where they belong uh without a drawing so then i'll just rough that in and then we'll go to our cadmium orange and then start doing this area right in here. And we can actually even put a little bit of yellow in there too. Uh, I'll go with the uh, Arelin. That's a little wee bit deeper, but it works really good for actual traditional painting. And then that's just all this in here. This is going to be darker, so we don't have to worry about that yet. And then up in here is where all our oranges are going to go and our quinacridone gold and I'll just do that right here but then I can even start introducing an actual texture to that and we can uh, put a little bit of yellow in there and that would be this right in here and then later on once I get these base colors in then I will actually start doing the stripes or doing the the fine dot pattern whatever it takes just to start making it look more and more complex but that won't be till the very end and those will be on their own layers so if I want to go back in and change what's underneath it whether it be lighten it darken it add colors I'll be able to do that without affecting my detail because that that does take time to do and then what we'll do is we'll put in uh, quinacridone gold right in here and that would be it. And then this right in here, you could see this is going to be the white line right through here, which is this white line right through here. And then down in there, I can actually start putting in, um, let's start with the orange. And I can even go to a texture now. And what I'll do is I'll go to my bloom and do the same thing. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And this will be a very subtle texture. And then if the texture is a little wee bit too strong to start off with, that's okay. I'll just leave it blend because my layer is wet. And then I'm going to put some quinacridone gold down in there. And if it's still a little bit too much texture, then I can take my blend brush and just diffuse it down a little wee bit. Just to, just to diffuse a little bit. There'll be a very subtle texture there, but that's something we could build off of. And then right in here is a good bit of yellow. And then now here's the thing right there. And now here is uh, this. This particular painting, we're not going to use uh, any marquee tools, any masks or anything. We're just going to paint. But 
I, if I keep things on their own separate layers, then I'll quick dry this. You can see I can even go back in and diffuse this out again. If I left it run a little bit too long, all I gotta do is take up the opacity and it'll destroy those lines if I don't want them there, which I don't in this case. Now that texture is gonna be interesting. It might be okay and we'll leave it there for now. But what I did wanna show you is I will actually leave everything there for now, quick dry it so it just stops it right where it's at. But then what I will be doing for this particular painting is then just going back to the eraser and then going back in and taking out this right here and leaving it back to pure white again. And instead of worrying about how I paint up to it, I could paint over it and just erase it out. Would probably be the easiest and the fastest way to do it this way, unless you want to marquee tool that off or make a mask. Uh, otherwise, we could paint it, but for me, I would rather continue I want to continue my pattern somehow up into and then unfortunately sometimes past the borders. So to do that, I either have to marquee it off so I don't have to worry about painting a specific pattern right up to a line. That's pretty tough to do. Uh, or if I paint the pattern past my line, then I'll just go back and erase it up to where I want to uh, end my pattern at. So you got two choices, either marquee tool it off uh, with a free hand uh, and then what I would do is use the add, then that way I could uh, take this like this down here. And then now I'd only be able to work within this area. And then when it connects over, or I could go up here and then hit edit. And then right in here where it says uh, invert selection right there. And then now I'll be able to work anywhere but that little white strip. So if I want to go back in here and add more orange or more quinacridone gold, uh, that would be right here. I'm going to tone down the color a little bit. And then now if I put some in, then I could go back in and continue my pattern right up to uh, the actual uh, edge of my hard white edge, which is right here. And then later on, I'll even maybe even put those chips in and uh, just to make it look ragged looking but that'll depend on how much detail I want to put it in you can see there's even like a cut line effect there too uh, but for this right here uh, then you can also see what the water did uh, as far as uh, carrying it if you're not quick up oh, let me try that again I will undo that and then fast dry it and then that's it I would leave it like that uh, but then again this has to go a good bit darker uh, but what I could do is then if I do it on a separate layer I can make this quite a bit darker and then erase this out along this line in other words for example uh, we'll do this and then we will actually enter that and we could go back to the raw umber now and we will put this in here and make this a good bit darker just as an example and if I want my pattern a little wee bit finer then I'll go back to the gold and start this way and this will be the start of everything again and I can I can actually work right up to that line and then if I hit deselect and then now take my eraser Fast dry it where it's at, then I could go back right along here and straighten this edge up and do just the exact opposite of a selected area. And then if I turn off my pencil drawing, now I'll have a straight edge there uh, that's going to define one of the uh, outside edges of the uh, actual conch shell itself. And then this would be another edge. So you can make the edges any way you want, either a selected area or just go back in and erase it and go from there. Now you can see here the same thing. Uh, what I will do is I will actually turn back on the drawing and then right in here, like say for example, if I wanted to start making this darker, then I could just go back into it and I would rather go into a separate layer because then I won't disturb the layer I'm on. Otherwise, I'll keep on getting that wet on wet and I don't want to use dry because then it won't feather out or blend out nicely the way I want it. Now, if you want to just uh, use loose strokes, you can, 
but what I will do is go back to my real soft brush, uh, turn the opacity way down just a little wee bit at a time, and then I will go back to my Potter's Pink this time. I'm going to make it bigger, a little bit of water, and then what I would do is go back in and just go right across here. And this is a little wee bit of a of a actual pattern now so you could see that if I want these edges uh, what hang on if I want these edges like right in here you could see that there is a very subtle pattern in there and if I want that pattern to come out then what I will do is uh, go back in I will first to fuse some of these lines just a little bit but then that is how I will start to actually build up that edge of where it's real bright underneath from the reflected light coming up in and then once I actually take my cobalt violet I will go back to the soft brush and then uh, I will go back to the cobalt violet and then now I can actually paint in right along that edge and make this the shadowed area and this would be right in here and then there's darker it's a little bit darker in here and I would actually put maybe some Potter's pink in there and right along this edge I could darken this up a little bit and then I'm gonna help it out a little bit just to blend this a little bit and then we are going to make this darker. And what I could even do is go back to the almost the raw umber. Can I get on gold first? And if I lift up and set down again, then I'm going to be giving certain areas two coats instead of just one. So that's a very subtle motion, but it could be very quick. And then that would be it there. And I'll just fast dry that. And then this would be the beginning now of our actual uh, shadowed area in here by just by going darker and darker and then again since this is its own layer then I can actually go back to the eraser and I pick a, a sharper edged brush and I could go right around here and pull that all out and erase it if I want to but being that how dark some of these areas have to go you can almost just leave it there and then that becomes your color unity where you're tying your pieces together by a, a, a light colors. And this, this subtle edge right in here, depending on what's going on in certain places, like right in here, this subtle edge right in here, I would even leave that in some cases to add some character because certain areas, it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth because of what I'm doing, just a very smooth area uh, of the certain parts of the shell uh, that were real glass smooth and then the rest of them have a pretty good pretty good strong texture to them But what what I'll do is if I keep on uh, Just adding layers here of different colors and then overlapping them uh, One after another then I'll slowly build up to where this is going to be uh, Shadowed down here and in the in the dark and that will pronounce my real bright edge right here So again, you can't have light without dark and you can't have dark without light but with just this little bit of what we're doing, let's get some of this done in a speed painting and then we'll stop later and talk about what we've done and what we have yet to do. I went ahead and started the painting from the beginning. I wanted to put a real light glaze of cadmium orange over the majority of the shells. This will allow me to start with color unity and also establish my orange areas that have a real nice glow from the reflected light areas. I went ahead and started my darkest shadowed areas just to use it as a guide to always keep it darker than anything else on the painting. Otherwise, I might start to make my medium values too dark that will not leave me enough room to make my darkest areas dark enough. As I said when I photographed this, I had a really good idea how I exactly wanted to paint it. With a still life such as this, I will take the photo and use it exactly how I photographed it because I already had an idea how I wanted to paint it in mind. 
if I do wildlife paintings or something such as that, then I may use bird photos from a telephoto, scenery from a wide angle, and actually even bring home some cattails or other plants that I may use in the painting to work from. That is a quite different setup that cameras cannot reproduce because of the different lenses and subjects involved. With a still life such as this, I could photograph it exactly how I want to paint it. Let's take a look and see what we got. Okay, let's take a look and see what we have. Uh, just looking over the photograph, uh, as I said again, a lot of times often with still life such as this, I will photograph it exactly how I want to paint it. And then that way I already have a good idea in mind of what I want to portray uh, as the focal point of the painting because it is what actually caught my eye to begin with to take a picture of it to use it as a reference. So if something catches my eye as I'm walking around, then I want to retain that thought, so to speak, and, and capture it just as how I would want to paint it. So now with that said, I'm looking over different areas. Again, I started uh, the darker areas just to keep them the darkest, but then also keep in mind, all I did with some of the darker areas, I just duplicated the layers over again. Not only does it make it darker immediately, but if I like the effect where I'm going, then I could just duplicate it and keep that same effect, but make it much darker. But then also I will work on one or the other layers, usually the copy layer. But then if I want to subtly erase or subtly add more colors to it, I could do it in a very subtle way to create very faint shapes in a shadowed area. Now that's often a lot of times a camera can't do. And for that reason, unless it's an HDR photo, uh, then you're not going to retain... Uh, as many uh, details in either a well sunlit area or a uh, real deep shadowed area. Now, just looking at the uh, focal point that I caught uh, right away, just walking past these shells were just a reflected light of this white right here uh, up against the, the glossy surface of the actual shell itself. And that's what I wanted to retain. Now, I started taking this one dark enough and light enough but then now I'll have to do the same thing over here. So I'll actually probably lighten some of this area up a little bit uh, back towards just a, a real hot pink, if you will. Uh, and then once I start darkening this up too, that'll make the brighter area look that much brighter. When you put values fairly close together, there's not that much of a dramatic difference right now. Now, as far as this white goes also, where the real smooth glossy part ends of the shell, I have two choices. I could either erase it out, or what I will probably do is create an opaque layer of uh, just maybe the uh, unbleached white and the pure white and start taking it over that. Then that way I could still manipulate that layer if I want to. I could erase it out, but easily go back in and add it in. If I start erasing my picture, or my painting, I should say, in this case, then I may have a hard time manipulating that later. I would have to go back in and actually repaint those areas. Uh, and then once you get the watercolors acting on their own, then that may be a little bit of a tougher uh, area to redo. And once I start sharpening up some of these lines and erasing out some of these areas, I'll get a more crisp effect of that bright sunny day. Uh, with, with lost areas, or I should say too many soft areas going from a transition from one shape to another, you'll lose that bright, crisp, sunny day. Uh, usually the hard edges will help you with that. But looking at the, this photograph, I have a lot of areas to take darker. The dots, the real subtle dot pattern, and the line pattern of the very fine script work, just like, for example, these lines right in here, I'll keep those again on their own layers too, just so I could go back in and manipulate underneath them so I don't lose all the time and effort I'll have creating all those dots and lines. But then also keep in mind, if you have, for example, a dot brush that's not quite creating the dot pattern you want, then if it's on its own layer, you can actually expand or contract that layer to put the dots more where you want them to, to be in scale to what you are trying to render. Now I'm lucky what I'm working with right now works pretty well uh, just with the, the shape and scale I'm working with. 
So keep that in mind also, that if you keep different objects or different uh, parts of a painting on its own layer, then you can always uh, rescale them if you need to, depending on what your brush is doing for you. Because again, I'm only working with 16 different brushes, that's it. And I just added one recently, but uh, I'm very content with the amount of brushes I have. Now, with that all said, let's go back in and let's see if we could finish up this painting and see how it turns out. Okay, I'm just still continuing on defining my shadowed areas. Uh, this will build up in slow layers, but then I will also duplicate or even triplicate the layers just to darken up specific areas. If I like the textures and the patterns that I have established, instead of taking the chance to diffusing them, I would just duplicate them over. Defining the sharp white areas, these are the areas that are going to jump out at you the most. I like to put nice sharp lines on these shapes that really define the shape itself, not so it's a soft, confusing edge. Darkening up all my shapes, I again go back in and refine more shapes over and over, using multiple layers to do so. I establish my white layer on its own layer so I can manipulate it as I want, whether it be using the opacity adjustment or the eraser. I also do the same thing with the dirt inside the foreground shell so I can adjust it as I need. Let's take a look and see what we have. Okay, let's take a look and see what we have. Uh, just again, uh, the, the, the whites of the real glossy area or actually the dirt itself inside the shell. I kept those on individual layers just so I could adjust them or manipulate them as I need or want to. Uh, only reason why is like, just for example, the white, I can either turn down the opacity and let the colors and patterns come through them, which is on the original reference right here. If you look at the white real close, uh, a lot of it is transparent to the point where the patterns and colors below it are coming through. So for that reason, then I can even adjust the transparency or even just put on the transparent lock and take a wash of colors over too, just to destroy that pure white or pure unbleached white and just give it some variations of colors. Now, uh, also uh, with some of the other shadowed areas, I did as much as even uh, triplicate the layers uh, just to get them dark enough because I wanted them darker but if I have textures and patterns started then I don't want to keep on painting over those because then what I will do is possibly lose that texture with a wet color on top of a wet layer so if I see something I like I just keep it as a separate layer then I can always go back to it even as a starting point as I'm painting uh, that would be the same as just saving Rebel files as you go. Then that way, uh, you'll always have a starting point of what you like and where you left off at. Now, as far as uh, the rest of the painting goes, uh, let's take a quick look and just see if there's any issues. And the only thing I did down here at the bottom, when I took that big piece out, we'll open it up again, this piece right here, what I did was I made this part of the shell separate from this part because it looks like it could easily be two different shells. So I went ahead and just darkened this edge up right in here and made this part a separate shell than this. And then I also added just a little bit of a highlight around the edge of this right here shell just to give it some thickness. Because if I didn't do that highlight, the, the shell itself would look literally paper thin. Uh, but now let's see... And then I just uh, put more cobalt violet and cobalt uh, blue in a little bit deeper. And I left it mix a little bit to give me those neutral grays. But I also kept some pure colors there too, uh, just to add a little bit of snap uh, to the shadowed areas. And other than the uh, permanent rose really brought out the, the pinks and then even a real light wash of the permanent red uh, or I should say the Windsor Red, but then also I think the Permanent Rose did a much better job of duplicating uh, these colors in here. And again, the colors I use uh, are only about 
the uh, 26 different colors and that's all I ever use and with the amount of combinations I get from any of those uh, is always usually more than I can ever need uh, in any given painting but with that all said this one looks like it's coming to a close I will put this one up here and then we'll take one last look at it and I don't see anything that I can really adjust. I just put a real hard white edge around here and that will really uh, bring it out and separate it from any of the background. And then the dirt, I even put a little bit of uh, light speckles on it because there was some light colored sand on top of the dirt uh, within the uh, shell itself. And then once I uh, uh, put in some of the deeper shadowed areas, uh, it indirectly brings the light shapes out even more. So just, just by darkening one place might bring out another place uh, at, at indirectly the way you may want. But that's one thing about transparent watercolors. You always got to keep some room that if you want to go darker, uh, you'll have uh, enough room to make something darker if you want to indirectly light something else up. I think this guy is just about done. With that said, I think this one will come to a close. And I hope you've picked up something out of this tutorial. Until we see you out in the field or back at the studio, thanks for watching.